Hello, Livingston, and welcome to a first of its kind program here in Livingston Education on the topic of multiculturalism in Livingston. I'm Mike Raymer, and with me are 10 residents representing various cultures in town. Before introducing them, I wanted to highlight the purpose of this program, that is to learn about various cultures, get to know our neighbors, and embrace our similarities and differences. And now for our guests, Ilona Berlaga, Adriana Carucci, Shoma Chaduri, Doug Donovan, John Lee, Keith Hines, Jenna Hugh, Gabby Antoneda, Srini Salandra, and Jane Tian. Thanks so much, everyone, for being with us here today. I also wanted to share the rapidly changing demographics in town. In 2010, about 73% of residents were Caucasian. Today, that's decreased to 60%. Also in 2010, about 19% were Asian. Today, that's increased to almost 29%. The largest growth populations in town are coming from China and India. The world is indeed getting smaller and that is reflecting in our town. For all watching, please comment and ask questions in the live stream and we'll answer in a Q&A toward the end of the program. So everyone, looking forward to a great and lively discussion. So let's begin with each of our guests giving a brief background of themselves and their culture. Alona, do you wanna start us off please? Yes, hi guys, I'm Ilona Berlaga and I have been a resident of Livingston for 17 years. I have two girls who are 19 years old and they graduated from Livingston High School last year and are now freshmen in college. And I'm really excited to be on this program and I am looking forward to answer all your questions. And I forgot something very important. I'm originally from Odessa, Ukraine. Uh, great to have you. Thank you, Alona. Adriana. Hi, I'm Adriana Carucci, um, Italian background, born in Argentina. Um, I live in Italy right now, and um, I have a son that graduated from Livingston High in 2017. Um, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions you have. I love photography and food. I'm a good cook. So if you have questions, ask. Great, thank you, Adriana. Shoma. Good evening, Livingston. Uh, my name is Shoma Chaudhary. Um, I'm originally from Bengal in the Eastern part of India. Um, I moved to this town more than 15 years now and really to find the best schools and the greenery proximity to the city uh, raising two boys in the Livingston public school system and I just love it I love the diversity of the culture that I find here and learn every day looking forward to this discussion thank, thank you Mike you. thank you Shoma Doug Hello, everyone. My name is Doug Donovan. Uh, my family uh, has lived here in Livingston for three years. Uh, I was born and raised in the Philadelphia area, uh, my parents being of German, Swedish, and Irish descent. Uh, I've been very lucky to have experienced uh, different cultures over the years through my studies, work, travels, marriage, and volunteer service. Uh, I studied in Germany while in college. I served in the Peace Corps in the Dominican Republic for three years, where I married uh, a local young woman with whom I raised three bicultural kids uh, over the course of 20 years in South Orange. Uh, later, I, I was subsequently remarried to my Kenyan wife, uh, and we have two children who attend the Harrison School here in Livingston. Uh, over the years, I worked in Latin America and Europe and volunteered with an organization that provided services to political uh, asylees and refugees. And I'm very happy to uh, participate on this evening's panel. Thank you. Thanks so much, Doug. John. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm John Lee. I was born and raised in Queens, New York, and moved to Livingston when I was 11 years old. So I went through the Livingston education. My parents are both from Korea, so I represent second generation Asian Americans and Korean Americans. So very much looking forward to the discussion. Very good. Thanks for being with us, John. Keith, Mr. Hines. Mr. Raymond, um, 
I've been in town for 40 years. My name is Keith Hines. I've been in town for 40 years. I uh, also um, co-founder of Livingston Committee for Diversity. I work out with different charities in town. I think uh, this is a very good discussion and you can ask any questions. Thank you. Very, very good, thank you. Jenna. Good evening, Livingston. Um, I'm an original Chinese, but uh, my family came from Japan to America after spending uh, living in Japan for 10 plus years. Uh, my two kids were born in Japan, but they grown up in Livingston. Uh, I've lived in Livingston for 19 years. Uh, my eldest uh, daughter uh, is 28 and uh, got married just before. Uh, my son is a junior in Rutgers and uh, my profession is in uh, IT. I'm very lucky and glad to be able to dis discuss uh, um, on this topic tonight. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Jenna. And Gabby. Hi, everyone. My name is Gabby Antoneda. I uh, born and raised in Livingston, New Jersey. Um, I graduated from Livingston High in 2016 and went to school up in Boston. Um, but I'm back in Livingston for the time being until I go to law school this fall. Um, so you could say I'm a Livingston born and bred, but I'm the first in my family to be born in the United States. Um, I guess I represent the Latino community here. Um, my father was born in Ecuador on the border with Peru in the South and my mom's side is Cuban. Um, my, mom saw, my mom being born in Spain though, um, uh, fleeing the Castro regime, they stopped in Spain, she was born there. So a bit of an interesting history, which I'm happy to delve into later on, but excited to be part of this panel. Um, and thanks everyone for joining. Thanks very much, Gabby, for being with us. Srini. Yeah, Namaskar, uh, this is the Indian way of salutation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Livingston. Uh, my name is Ashwini Salandra. Uh, for the most part in the US, I lived in Brooklyn, exposed to multicultures in Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn, we all know, is a big borough with a variety of cultures from the, across the globe. And I'm living in this town uh, for the past seven years. Uh, two kids, I have a 22-year-old, uh, he graduated from Livingston High School, and a 12-year-old uh, girl, she's in the middle school right now. Uh, I'm an IT professional as well. Uh, and uh, thanks, Mike, for having me on this uh, program tonight. Great to have you, Srini, and love your dress tonight. Thanks so much. <laughs> and Jane, tell us about yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Jean Tian. I'm from China, uh, from Beijing, China. Uh, I've been, uh, been in this town for 20 years. I have two children. My daughter graduated from Livingston High. And now she's working. Uh, my son is a, a junior in Livingston High. So I've been seeing how this town has been changing, has been growing. It's uh, such a nice opportunity. Thank you, Mike, for inviting me. Thank you, Jane. And thank you, everyone, again, for being with us. What an interesting group and panel from different parts of the world. I'm really excited to start talking about culture and multiculturalism. So let's open up the conversation. Uh, this program has three parts to it. So let's start with the first part. Let's talk about culture. Right. What is culture? Talk about your individual cultures and what are the elements of culture? Right. There's many different elements of it. So who wants to start off? Or do you want me to call on someone? <laughs> Show me the, oh, there you go. Alona, go ahead. <laughs> so for me, culture is traditions, art, customs, food and everything related to it. So I represent on this panel a uh, I would call it Russian community. Up until three weeks ago, that's what we were, we are, no matter where we came from, from the former Soviet Union, we all called ourselves Russian community. Now there is more separation in the community because of the current war. So originally I am specifically from Odessa, Ukraine, but however, everything, uh -huh. all the traditions, art and everything, is for the Russian community, I believe, is very similar, no matter where we are from, from the former Soviet Union. Mm. 
Very interesting. A lot happening in that part of the world, of course. Shoma, tell us a little about Indian back Indian culture. So, I mean, talking about Indian culture, I think I, I feel so fortunate that I grew up in this unique country, which has a history like spanning thousands of years. I mean, Indian history goes all the way back to BC, before Christ. I mean, second century BC is, uh, we can trace back the oldest language that you find in India. And interestingly, like officially there are 22 languages, but having 2000 dialects in India. So I really, I feel so lucky that I grew up in this rich environment of literature, art, whatever, you know, name it, languages, traditional clothing. You can see Srini uh, reflecting a glimpse of it, uh, but, but there's so much more. There's so much more in the colors and the rituals and the customs. So having had this Indian heritage, I think, uh, it really represents a legacy that is centuries old, but I also had this added advantage of coming to America. America is a land of immigrants from all over the world. And I think I'm continuing this journey of organically you know, enriching myself, uh, starting from my chi childhood in India all the way to now in America. And I think I instill the Indian values and traditions in my American born children. Uh, to just develop this global perspective, right? Uh, with a very open mind, uh, imbibe the best of the world to define who they want to be. So to me, culture really, you know, goes down to be a reflection of the values that we share as a community uh, for, for your intellectual growth, for your spiritual growth, uh, for, of course, a social harmony and a political harmony. And it's so important that we don't keep it closed, right? We, we want to share it. Uh, it needs to be assimilated and blended uh, with everyone else. And I think that's what makes the world beautiful and colorful. Very well said, Sean. <laughs> Thanks so much. Mr. Hines, tell yes. us about the, the African-American culture. Well, the African-American culture started back in the slave days when the Africans was brought to America as slaves. And that's, that's how it actually you know, started. And so we read in Afro Americans. And it's one thing that's important that the slaves had their, you know, we had our food and we have, see, I'm saying that actually religion is a little tied to it because back in the slave, slave days, they, they, that's the only thing they had to go on was singing spiritual songs because a lot of spiritual songs, I'm not going to get in the religious part of it, but it comes from the slaves. In, in Africa coming across here. And then we have all different cultures. We have food culture, our dress culture, dance culture. But we, I say that culture is important that we can learn from all cultures, all of us, because we all are made from the same mechanism in our blood and stuff. But I feel that in Livingston, we are pretty good. And I like to learn other cultures, my cultures, other cultures that people learn, we like to learn it. So that's my take on uh, African-American cultures. Very good, Mr. Hines. Thanks so much. And for those that don't know, Keith has lived in town for 40 years. Yep. So imagine the changes in the demographics that he's seen and his experiences. Yep. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank John, you. John, tell us a little bit. You, you, uh, your background Korean, yes? Are you first generation or second generation? What? So my mother actually moved when she was in high school. My father moved for grad school and then I was born in the US. It was interesting what someone was saying about how her culture is so rich and has so much history. I think when I think of culture, it's unique because I think of my culture as brand new. I am Asian American. And so I, I connect with people where they were born in the States but then their parents moved from Asia or from Korea. And so there really aren't that many of us. There's a huge bolus of Asian Americans that moved for different reasons, uh, many of them for education. And so that population just blossomed in the New York, New Jersey community, and as we see today. And so for culture to me, it's it's trying to find out what your identity is, um, trying to understand. It's funny, one thing I can I notice amongst Asian Americans is, depending on their accent, depending on what kind of foods they prefer, you can tell how or much earlier on did their family come to America. So my uncle who moved when he was young, he has a Brooklyn accent. Whereas on my dad's side, they very much have a thick Korean accent and I'm somewhere in the middle, right? So that, that to me is culture. A lot of it is generational. Mm, very interesting. And Gabby, 
tell us about yourself. You mentioned, of course, you're born and raised in Livingston, and but you're and you're second generation, right? Tell tell us a bit about yeah. Latin so people. actually, yeah. what what John was saying really resonates with me. I'm of that. Uh, we're trying to figure it out. Generation. Um, my mom, who I mentioned, was born in Spain. Um, after my grandparents left Cuba in the 1960s, after Castro came to power, um, she was only five months old when she came to the United States. So I don't feel like calling myself a first generation because my mom was actually raised in the United States, but still so closely tied to their culture. Um, I also feel like in the Latin community, it's really interesting. Um, I'm Ecuadorian, Cuban. You can sprinkle Spain in there too, if you so feel like it, um, but it's a huge community, right? It's a ton of countries coming together um, and culture, honestly, for us, we've been trying to figure it out since the days of like Christopher Columbus, right? You're um, back in the days of colonization, Latin America had a mixed system where um, the colonizers would actually marry locals and then they had a caste system based on that. And so I think that framework is really important to highlight here because it's been mixed and it's um, a culture that everyone's been trying to figure out since, you know, 1492. So um, also I wanna add really quickly, not to make this a history lesson, but the concept of Latino came to be in the 1960s and 70s when the Latin community, predominantly Mexicans and Puerto Ricans in New York, Mexicans in California had to identify themselves on the census. Um, so this concept of like Latinidad or Latino in the United States, um, like John was mentioning, we're still trying to figure it out. Um, we have a very close pride of our country, but also, you know, if I see a Dominican friend or, you know, somebody from Brazil, even if it's not Spanish speaking, we have kind of this closeness um, being in the United States. So that's my little spiel there on history and how it ties into my personal understanding. Thanks so much, Gabby. Really enlightening. Jetta, tell us about your uh, being from where originally again you are. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, you just asked you. I, I think your question is what is culture? What do you think culture is? So to me, the culture is uh, how people is a habit is comprised of habits and uh, the way the people thinking the way the value they have towards everything and this this whole thing should is established over long time period long period of time it's not just one day or so it, it, it's very interesting is how people behave how people see things and especially for me, I, I live in China, Japan, and now in America, I see this culture difference and this culture thing is very, very, uh, like the sense of this is very strong uh, on my mind. Very I, interesting. Yeah, I see the, 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 the characters or the very, the, the very special like, characters in each culture. And that makes that uh, group of people outstanding or very unique. And that character cannot be replaced uh, by other things. If they, without these characters, they are not they, what they are. So I see this uh, after living in this uh, three different of countries. Very and, good, Jenna. Yes, and uh, I, I think I would like uh, to have more time to share my thoughts and uh, based sure. on my experience. Yes. We'll, we'll certainly have more time in, in, as we get deeper into the discussion. So Adriana, tell us, tell everyone where you're broadcasting from through the global world of technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am in Italy right now, and um, yes, culture is, is very important to us. It's, um, it, it's a big part of who we are, uh, between our fashion, uh, the difference in each region, the way we interact with our elderly. Um, it's, it's very important 
uh, the elderly is a big part of who we are. You know, our, our society is um, in grand part um, built on, on the elderly because they, the youth has to go elsewhere to find a job unless they have something that comes from the family. Um, so it's it's very uh, it's very interesting from mm. that perspective. Also, uh, you have to understand that north and south, uh, there's a big gap between the north and the south of Italy. One is very much industrialized. The other one is more farm. Um, We don't, it's, it's, it's different. It's a big gap. There's I don't a big know gap. Other, others have traveled to different places through the world. I've been fortunate to have traveled to Italy. Of course, you think of Italy, uh, family, food, right? Yes. Great wine. <laughs> so we'll talk more about the commonalities of different cultures that we all have. So definitely, thanks for definitely. being with us, uh, broadcasting in from overseas. So uh, Srini, tell us more about the Indian culture. Yeah, I mean, like <clears throat> yeah, my friend Shuma said, uh, India is itself is multicultural, right? So um, I think culture by itself gives you an identity of who you are. I think that makes you very unique um, in the in the world to uh, stand out. I mean, you being an Indian or Italian or um, Chinese or Japanese. So it, it has its own unique characteristic as to how you dress up, how you talk. I mean, it's not, a, not only language, but also your body language, like uh, how you nod your head how you you know do your body body actions i think every culture has a different way of doing it and most importantly the religion beliefs so i think all this net net makes you very unique and uh, i think thanks to uh, uh, countries like america god bless america that it gives the whole world to you know come under one roof and share each other's culture i think that's that's the uh, beauty uh, here we are all sharing um, yeah, I mean, we'll talk more about this um, Indian culture uh, in, in, in the next... Uh, Lots to uh, talk uh, about. Yeah. <laughs> and from what I understand, Shoma and Srini, I mean, India is such a large, vast country. There are many cultures within India. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah? yeah so, that was, uh, th th that's a tough yeah. question to answer, Mike, when you say, talk to me about Indian culture. <laughs> <laughs> right, many, many different cultures. Jane, tell us about your culture, your background. Well, uh, talking about uh, the background I come from, right? I, I come from China. Uh, China has like uh, thousands of years of history that we carry over. So uh, a lot of things that we value in our uh, daily life, let's say, you know, how we uh, treat the uh, senior people, how our family are together, uh, how our value carry over to you know generation or generation uh, that's something core to you know uh, Chinese including food <laughs> which is one of the uh, big 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 uh, thing in our culture I think over the year uh, we noticed that China has changed tremendously uh, the old old culture is still there but China has been developing into a very modernization world. So uh, if you uh, get a chance to travel to China, you will see those, uh, you know, uh, airports so much newer than American mm -hmm. <laughs> and the uh, cities, uh, you know, getting so huge, so modernized and the culture has been changing. But the core, I believe, is still there to make Chinese unique. So very interesting. Yeah. Such a large, vast country. I've never been. I would love to go one day. Uh, yeah. And I think like India, many cultures within such a large country. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. more. Doug, tell us, you have such an interesting background, <laughs> having experienced and lived different cultures in your, as you described in your intro. What does culture mean to you? You've experienced many different cultures. What are some of the elements? Well, um, certainly... It was mentioned before, art, music, food, um, religion, things like that. Uh, I would also throw in there, um, and this partially comes from, uh, when I was younger, I used to think that mm, I really didn't 
think I had a culture, but it was really through my travels uh, and being in, with people from other cultures that I was able to uh, really identify how I was different culturally than um, others, uh, you know, from other countries, other cultures. Um, one, one of the things um, I would say that I realized was, uh, you know, Americans in general, I think, have a, a positive outlook, optimism. Um, and, um, you know, it's part of the, I think, the attraction for, you know, people coming here to live from different parts of the world that anything is possible, you know, anything is possible here. And I, I like that about uh, our culture, you know, um, um, you know, I'm sure there are people who aren't like that, but um, that's one thing that I think that we, Americans have um, an optimistic outlook uh, on life and on potential and opportunities. Well said, and you've lived where again, Doug, in Latin America? Yeah, I lived in the Dominican Republic in the Peace Corps for three and a half years. Um, and I worked in Latin America, in Europe, uh, and my wife is from Kenya. So, you know, I've gotten to know uh, intimately and over long periods of time through family. My first wife was Dominican. Uh, my Kenyan wife, through family, gotten to know her, her family. They've gotten to know our family. I would say that um, I've had the impact that I've had on people in my life, my family and friends and neighbors has been fabulous uh, in being able to, for them to experience, you know, uh, in real life, somebody who is from Africa or somebody who is from Latin America and dispel some of the preconceptions maybe that they had uh, about those, uh, you know, people from different parts of the world. And, you know, get to know them as human beings, mothers and fathers, sisters, brothers, nephews, uh, nieces, aunts and uncles, things like well, that. So, said, Doug, I, you know, I'm listening to everyone. What are some of the commonalities and elements that are flowing through all this as we listen? What's the, you mentioned it a couple of times, Doug, that one word starts with an F, right? right. We're all, Mr. Hines said, we're all human, right? What's, are. We, what is it, Mr. Hines? All human and, and, uh, saying that the different cultures that we can learn from different cultures because yeah. it's going to be important you know and i would i say my piece on the second part well family i, I is the theme that's flowing yeah. through this right family yeah, family people family. mention traditions i was just writing some notes food is a big part of culture yeah, food right uh music art so really really a lot of commonalities flowing through. passion pardon me hey, passion Jim. passion yeah. yeah. So speaking of passion, let's go to the next phase of the program. You're ready for this? I call it the lightning round. Basically, I'll ask just a few questions, one question at a time. And the first thing that pops in your mind, uh, tell us what you tell us what you think. So first question, in which cultures are people very expressive when communicating and they talk with their hands? There's one that comes right to mind for me. <laughs> Who's got the big smile? <laughs> Any others? Yes, it's it's true. Uh, we 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 use our hands a lot and our body language, um, especially among friends. Um, if we are in a meeting or you know we're very professional, we try to keep a very uh, stern look. But if we are among friends, uh, yes, we use body language, hands mm. to indicate things or make fun of somebody, even to curse at someone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and other cultures do that. Anyone else? Uh, of course, you think of Italian. I, Americans are pretty animated too. But it, 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 and it, Indian, culture, Indian culture does have it. I'm sure Srini is nodding there, I can tell. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. varies. I mean, as you move from north to south to east to west, you'll see the degree of movement changing. But there is a lot of, you know, body language uh, when, when Indians, especially as Adriana said, you're in a social circle where you don't have somebody literally like judging you. You're like absolutely yeah. <laughs> free. And that's an expression of warmth and, you know, being close to others. So, yeah. Yes, I would I would say we come um, 
we're we're close up there. Uh, the Latino community had a lot of movement, um, a lot of hand gestures. Um, but there's even a I don't know if this is just uh, like an, a me thing, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of like communication, like nonverbal communication, just eye yes. looks and um, just like giving someone a certain eye or you know doing a certain thing with your mouth and um, you know we were talking about the Indian culture, there's certain places that move their heads a certain way. And I feel like I understand that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really funny you bring that up. <laughs> that's a yes, yes sometimes, Mike. This this is a yes, that, yeah. double yes, actually. <laughs> yeah, and, and tell, a lot of similarities. Yes, Jane, tell us, are the Asian cultures that I know, of course, the body language as Adriana was talking about, uh, is known you know, for a bow, right? Is that? Uh, of respect yeah yeah, yeah respect. Tell, tell us about that oh uh, i think that it's it's more like an old time fashion because right now people are not doing that because uh, china, china become more uh, a lot more modernized now so they they dress up like you know workplaces dress up like you know the uni, uh the, the 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 you know all kind of uh new fashion including those kind of courtesy thing. So yeah, yeah, in old time people bought, but we keep so many old 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 traditions uh, in our daily life, like people still playing Tai Chi, uh, you know, the old Chinese traditional dance. Uh, we keep a lot of those things, like Indian people, I think they do a lot of, you know, India dance, I saw. Mm. Yeah. Also great, great point. Jane, uh, another part of culture, right? Dance, we mentioned music, but uh, dance and celebration. So you're ready for the next question. What is a food that your culture is known for? Well, I can step in there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Apple American food, it, you know, it's very, it's an important um, aspect of our culture. You know, we, we have South, you know, soul food that comes from down South, you know, and, and during the slave times, uh, the masters would give them soul food type because they want the, the um, slaves to be strong and work the feels good. And then we kind of adopted it. And food is, um, our, you know, main choice. We have collard greens, we have, you know, fried chicken, jerk chicken, you know, sweet potatoes. You know, it, it's, part of our, it's part of our culture. With anybody. And in our culture, that's what we have. But one thing about it, anybody, anybody can eat our, our food from our culture. And that's why I make it, anybody can eat. You can learn to make it, you learn to cook it. So I say that food was very important to our culture because when the slaves came over here, that's all they had. And then a little aspect of, uh, I'm, I'm probably getting off the track here, but the re religion is part of our culture because that's all the slaves can do to help past time is singing spiritual that's that's why it's part of our culture and that's why you see a lot of black churches but yes. that's that's why i say but food is really good thank you thank you mr Hines. i'm curious alona uh russian uh what 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 is uh ukraine and russian food uh, what, what comes to mind immediately pierogi and pilmeni which is the same as dumplings ah dumplings very very popular yes yeah. This is yeah. probably like the most popular Russian Ukrainian food. And what are the dumplings filled with? Like what kind of? Uh, so Ukrainians like dumplings with potatoes, uh, pierogi actually, with potatoes, meat, mm -hmm. uh, sauerkraut, hmm. um, and cheese and sour cherries. So we eat it all. Ah, very interesting. Um, but in general, pierogi are very, very popular. Pierogi could be stuffed with uh, potatoes, right? Potato. Anything. Potatoes, meat, sauerkraut, cheese, or cherry. Nice. Of course, the Asian cultures are known uh, for their dumplings as well, yeah? Uh, so it's interesting across yeah, the world. Cool. Jenna, tell us about that. Do you, uh, do you cook dumplings at home? Yes, dumpling is the most well-known food in China, I think, and all over the world now. Uh, interesting, like uh, Yuna just said, in your culture, a dumpling is, is the famous. And uh, yeah, the Chinese 
dumping comes in the same shape, but just we do the different way. We use different material. And this comes with the like human beings wisdom. I think people live in that geographic area, they have easily to get that type of material, right? So it's interesting. So I see the the common similarity yes, behind the scene. But speaking of uh, Chinese food, yeah, Chinese, uh, yeah, even though dumpling is most famous, but there are many other type of food and uh, very popular and well-known. And the people eat different food in different uh, occasion, like, uh, Celebrating different holidays. Yeah, celebrate. Yeah. Like new, China, uh, new Year, people eat dumpling and the Nian Gao, the sticky rice cake. Uh, it pronounced in Chinese as Nian Gao. Also, it means every year you, for kids, young kids, they, they grow taller and taller. So people eat that during the Chinese New Year. And uh, also, this phenomenon also exists in Japanese culture. In Japan, we gave a uh, noodle, a type of like thin noodle. If you go to Japanese restaurant, there is two types of noodle. One is the thick one, the white one, right? The other is uh, like darkish, brownish, thin one. So the thin one is called soba. Soba also means your neighbor. So when you have new neighbor moving in, people usually give out soba welcome the new neighbor. So this culture, this like a food related culture thing is very, very interesting and has more meaning than just it appears. And uh, Very interesting how the foods have different meanings. Now, I know this is a really tough question for Adriana to select one food <laughs> from your, uh, but what, what, uh, what comes to mind that is one of your favorites? It's, it's very difficult. Um, <laughs> Well, of course, we're known for pasta, pizza, um, but it all depends also um, on the on the. Um, I'm translating. I'm sorry, it's late for me. Um, <laughs> it's um, it's a festive um, issue, right? For example, for uh, Easter time. Um, you have fish on on Fridays. Uh, and you're you're not supposed to eat any meat. Uh, then for Easter holiday, you have to have the traditional meal, which is the base of uh, baby goat or uh, baby lamb. Um, and you can make it in different ways. Uh, same thing for any type of holidays. Depending on the holiday, is the type of food that you will cook. Um, so it's it's complex. It's not as yeah, simple to yeah. say one food. <laughs> how the certain foods translate, and you think of a celebration, different holidays, right? John, curious yes. with your uh, Korean background, what food come to mind for you? Uh, probably the most popular well-known Korean food would be kimchi, which is fermented cabbage. The origins of that was that Korea, for the most part, was a very poor agricultural country. So fermenting was just a natural way to keep the food. Um, over the past 70, 80 years, Korea has really grown economically and has also become modernized. So now a, probably a type of dish that is very popular is Korean barbecue. So a sweet marinated beef. Um, there's a ton now in North Jersey, I'm sure. You haven't gotten a chance to check it out. Queens as well. So yeah, I would say traditionally it'd be kimchi and then Korean barbecue has definitely become very, very popular uh, in this area. I've been to Korean barbecue, it's excellent. If anyone has an opportunity, uh, it's delicious. Gabby, tell us about, there's so much of course, Latin American foods and culture. What's your favorite? What comes to mind? Uh, well, I grew up mostly eating the Cuban food um, and Ecuadorian food. Uh, so it's really hard for me to say what an all-encompassing Latin American food because we all have our ways like like Jenna was saying based on where you are like you're that's the materials you work with um so like uh you know a tam tamales are made with banana leaves in the Caribbean but corn husks in um like Ecuador the Andes areas and so 
uh, we all have our common foods, but different ways of preparing them based on where we're from. Um, but a great thing about food, it's not just, you know, what is making, but the fact that we're sharing with people. And I think that's a huge part of our culture is, you know, using food kind of as the excuse to all get together. Um, and something we have in our culture is called sobre mesa. And so that means um, it's the concept of just sitting at the table for hours after you finish eating. And then like they bring out the dessert and then they bring out the after dinner drink and then maybe another after dinner drink and then maybe another <laughs> thing of dessert. And so you're just sitting at the table for hours, you know, sh sharing with other people, whether it's family, neighbors, friends. Um, I think that concept is pretty uh, solid throughout Latin America. And it's also in Spain, um, really common too. So um, food for us is a lot more than just a yummy dish. It's like gathering, I would say. Yeah food and celebration. And on that point, Gabby, great segue to my next questions for everybody. The, what cultures celebrate? Let's talk about celebration, right? Celebration, celebration of a new year holiday. Does everyone, everyone's culture celebrate a new year holiday? I'm curious. Yes? Yes. yes. Yeah, everyone. And yes. here's another one. What about celebration? I think this is interesting. Let's think about this. Uh, celebrate a teenager's coming of age. Right. No, in Latin America. Yeah. Other cultures. I know, Gabby, you were just talking, but tell us about the Latin America culture. There's a coming of age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have the quinceanera. I actually did not have one. <laughs> um, so I can't really speak to that. But my cousin uh, just had hers this weekend. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a coming of age for us. 15 years old. There's a ceremony that you change from flats to heels. And um I can't really speak to it because I never really went through it myself, but, you know, it's a big moment for us. Um, it's really that moment when you transition from into adulthood, um, you start taking on responsibilities. And um, I would think that it's also kind of a cultural stake that we have, um, no matter how many generations you've been in the United States, um, it still carries with you. So, yeah. Shrini. Hey, Mike, Mike, I, I, I can ahead. actually talk to that. Yeah, my, uh, uh, my wife was Dominican. And our first daughter, uh, we celebrated her quinceanera here in the basement of a church in Orange. And and I, you know, it's a, it's a very extended family, and we've been to many quinceaneras, and they're extravagant affairs. They're almost like weddings or, or bridal showers. I mean, um, very very uh, extravagant and important uh, time for for the the fifteen year old. And Doug and Gabby, quinceanera, it's when a, a girl turns, what is it, 15? 15, yeah, yeah, yeah. 15. So I was curious, Soma, Soma and Shirini, I'm not familiar. Does Indian, the Indian culture have a coming of age celebration? And what age would the children be? I don't know, Shirini. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, again, it's the same teenage, right? So uh, I'm sure uh, Soma would know more about that. It's, it's more for girls than boys. Uh, I think once they turn into adulthood, uh, 13, 14, I think they definitely, you know, have a variety of celebrations based on, again, whether you're from Southern India, Eastern, Western, North, and I think they all do in different way, but I think um, it's all done, uh, definitely. About uh, what age does it happen? Uh, 13, 14, when they actually turn into teenage, around okay. 13, 14 years. Because, of course, in the Jewish religion, there's a bar and bat mitzvah, uh, kids turn age eight, 13. And Alona, you could talk to that. I was going to ask you. <laughs> Is Russian? So we do not, have, in Russian Ukrainian culture, we do not have coming of age. We do not. But I am a, a Jew from Ukraine. So in US, uh, my girls had a bar mitzvah, but mitzvah I did not. Um, because when I grew up in the former Soviet Union, and then when the Soviet Union split up, it was an atheist country. So we didn't have religion that much, um, even though we always celebrated Jewish holidays. But forget about that. For Russians, the biggest holiday for Russian Ukrainians, for all of us, the biggest holiday of the year was always the New Year. And uh, Russian Orthodox, Ukrainian Orthodox Christmas is different. Um, it's on January 6th and 7th. 
usually. And that's why we always had a Christmas tree. We didn't call it a Christmas tree. It was just a tree. Um, and I still put it in my house up to this day. I just decorate it as a Hanukkah bush in blue and silver <laughs> colors. And that's the difference. But this was, and I would say still a lot of us preserve it uh, here. It's the biggest holiday of the year for us. Very good. Ready? Next question. Language, of course, is a big component of culture. So I'm curious, show of hands, who here speaks multiple languages? Others? Yeah, everyone. Fantastic. Anyone trilingual? Speak three? Think, really? I can't Great. see. Great. I need to speak five. Wow. You speak, speak five. five, so I was going to go up. Next one, four. Let's go. Anyone speak four languages? <laughs> well, and Soma has five. Soma, you win the prize. Tell which languages do you speak? Five languages. I speak, uh, I hope I speak English correctly. Uh, <laughs> I speak Hindi and I read and write. Let me tell you, I read and write English. I read and write Hindi. I read and write Bengali. I little bit read and write Urdu. I, I, I can speak, but I write. And I know a little bit of German. Mm. Nothing to do with India. Uh, but I also have, of course, you know, India has, as I said earlier, 22 official languages and 2000 plus dialect so as you travel i traveled extensively as a child because of my dad's job and uh i had to make friends and uh you end up learning punjabi you end up learning i in fact i understand srini's native language though i can't speak it's called telugu uh i had a tamilian friend a very hard language but one of the oldest languages from india extremely rich uh, in terms of literature and uh, so I end up definitely um, uh, with the number five, uh, but I do understand more than that. Uh, again, it's my, uh, I'm lucky to be born in that country and I continue to, I think I have a, I tell my son about this, right? He's into music that probably my exposure to so much of phonetically different sound has really sharpened my ability to uh, listen to good music too. So I think language has a very interesting uh, impact on your life and uh, it opens you up and when I listen to Russian or I listen to Italian uh, whether I understand or not I think I resonate with expressions because I've heard so much of a variety of languages and sounds. Mm. Just to add right so if you know multiple languages you can make the connections easily like bump there like you know if you can speak others language and the the association becomes very easy and then yeah. you can build that ice pretty quickly. So that's how you make new relationships and then you can expand your uh, horizon. And, and Sanskrit is a very old language and many of you probably are familiar with it. It's, it's one of the root languages to many other languages. And if you know Sanskrit, you'll find a lot of semblance in many languages, which are probably outside India even. And, and India as, as such has a lot of history of migration, right? People have come to that country, left their cultures, and that's why India is such a cauldron of cultures, right? And uh, you have name any culture of the world, I think you'll find something in India associated with that. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, so I think it's very a very good. important aspect. Very good. And uh, those that speak three languages, uh, just briefly, Doug, you mentioned you raised your hand. What, what do you speak? English, um, <laughs> Spanish, I speak uh, Spanish fluently. I'm, a, I'm about 90% there with Brazilian Portuguese. Very good. And I, I also, so I'm a singer and I sing uh, Bossa Nova. Ah. In Portuguese. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. John, did you mention you speak three languages? I'm trying to remember, no. Do you speak another besides English or? Uh, just Korean. It's interesting when we're talking about culture, though, for, for as second generations, that's actually one of the biggest, sometimes the gaps when the your parents' generations, their English is not as strong. And then when we were born in America, our, for my Korean or whatever, their language isn't strong either. And so to the previous topic, that's why food was so important. Even if we couldn't necessarily use strong vocabulary or deeper thoughts, we would connect at the dinner table. And that was really important, too. Yeah, definitely. Now, Gabby, you mentioned you, uh, you, of course, speak Spanish. And others, other languages, English, Spanish? What? Oh, for me? Um, well, yeah. when I was at the high school, I picked up, uh, well, actually, the middle school, when we were first able to choose a language, I picked up French. 
Um, and then I took it all the way to AP French and a little bit in college. And then um, I also picked up Italian my freshman year at the high school. And I picked up Italian like that, as we were saying, once you have a basis of one language, um, it's really easy to pick up another, especially in the same, um, like the Romance languages for me were really great. Um, the French accent for me, uh, it really <laughs> got the best of me. I did <laughs> nobody could understand me, but it was fine. I tried my best. Um, but I was, I did get to a point that I was very close to fluent. Um, but with the years, you know, I've, uh, I haven't been able to, but, uh, what John was saying, it's so funny. Like everything he's, he's saying is like resonates with me a lot as a second generation is, um, I, I speak Spanish because I grew up with my grandparents. They lived in my, in our home. And so they were the ones who, um, you know, were there during the days when my parents went to work, they picked me up from school and there's no other way to communicate besides learning Spanish. Um, but I also took it upon myself to really make it like my legacy and continue my culture. Um, I kept taking Spanish. I graduated with a Hispanic studies major from college. I'm going to plan to do legal work in Spanish as well. And so um, the cult, like that language for me, it, it doesn't take away from your Latinidad that I was saying. It doesn't take away from your culture, but um, speaking Spanish is something that's really important to me and is a way to carry on the legacy and to communicate with others. So it's terrific. Terrific. And Jenna and Jane, uh, you, of course, I know Chinese, we think of Mandarin, but I'm sure so many different dialects, right? Do you speak other besides a Chinese dialect, English, a Chinese dialect, any other languages that you speak, the two of you? No. I speak Japanese, uh, read and write, uh, because Japan is not like America. People come from different country and they speak different language, right? Only you have official language at work, but but Japan is is different. Uh, if you want to survive there, you have to speak Japanese. So there is no other choice. Okay, uh, yeah. Yes, and through the, the the better and better you get in one language. That's my experience. The 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 more and more you understand the culture. So language is actually, is really a big part of the culture and is reflect how people thinking, what they emphasize, what they uh, really focus. And um, yes, uh, like in Japanese, uh, Japan learned a lot from ancient China and uh, even to Western people, they don't, they couldn't distinguish who is which is what we look so similar, but the culture wise, we are very different. And hey, uh, think, oh, sorry, Jen, I thought you were finished. I apologize. Uh, I was thinking, Jane, Jane, did you do you speak other languages? Uh, yeah, I speak uh, Mandarin. I speak English. Talking about the Japanese, I, I think I have I had a funny uh, experience because I went to uh, Tokyo uh, before. So uh, I realized that I don't have to know any Japanese. I can understand everything because you know all the all the you know the, the signs, everything they yeah, are they look like Chinese. <laughs> so it's a funny 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 thing to realize you know traveling to Japan. But uh, I speak a little bit uh, Spanish. I speak a little bit Russian. So everything a little bit. I, I hope That's I have nice. the. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to move on to the next part. We're going to talk about what is multiculturalism and specifically multiculturalism in Livingston. I just wanted to give a shout out. We have a, quite a number of people watching online and want to appreciate them doing that. Uh, Fal Pandy is watching, Pam Tepper is watching, Jason Shapiro, uh, Abishka Gangwal. Elizabeth Weiss, Sona Batra. Thank you all. I know many others are watching. Please uh, put your questions uh, for our guests in the live stream and appreciate everyone uh, participating and partaking, uh, really. So let's move to multiculturalism, right? We're, we're kind of almost defining it in this conversation, isn't it? And, and maybe sprinkle in what's the difference in multiculturalism and diversity? I, sometimes people use these two interchangeably. Uh, what, 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 what is multiculturalism? I mean, really, it's, we're on screen now, yeah? Who wants to talk, talk to that? Go, Srini, go for it. You're, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I think 
multiculturalism uh, fits uh, into, I think, India pretty much because India, as Soma mentioned, um, we have 22 official languages and more than 2,000 dialects, right? And we have 28 states. And then within the 28 states, we have like multiple sectors of people speaking different languages, different cultures, different way of doing things, different foods. Uh, if you talk about Indian food, I mean, uh, I mean, you need a, diff a, a separate show for Indian food, okay? So, I mean, I used to own a restaurant um, in Brooklyn. So if, if I sit and write the menu, I mean, way to start, way to end. I mean, it, it, it can be a big Bible to write the Indian food menu. So like that, India itself as a uh, multiple cultures and end of the day, they respect each other and they all tie up to you know one ness called India, right? So that's what is multiculturalism is like unity in diversity. So that multiculturalism is also I think is there in Livingston right now, as we see right now in the screen. I mean, we have so many representatives. We are all uh, knowing each other. I think this is the beginning of uh, multiculturalism within. Uh, uh, we have diversity, definitely. That's that's where the diversity and multicultural uh, uh, plays in. Like diversity is like having multiple representation of different race, ethnicity, and religion, but all respecting each other and coming as together as one is multiculturalism. So I think in Livingston, I think this is a first stepping stone. You have uh, put together, Mike. Uh, thanks to you. I think that's my perception on the multiculturalism. Any, anyone also want to add to that their thoughts on? What is multiculturalism? Go for it, Alana. So I believe that either us or our parents brought us here into New York and surrounding areas, and it's like a melting pot. So what we are seeing now on the screen, it is a melting pot. We and what is multiculturalism? As as I said before, and Mike, I think agreed. You all have agreed with me, guys. It's embracing other cultures and not. I don't think acceptance is the right word because you don't accept, you embrace. You embrace the culture, you embrace uh, other people, other people's tradition, other people's food, whether you like it or not, it's a different story, but you are willing to try it and you're willing to give it a shot. And I think it's fabulous and we do have it in Livingston. And I think we instill it, at least I do, into our children. And every family is very different and there is no right or wrong. Some of us do it more, some of us do it less. But as long as we do it one step at a time, the kids um, will be embracing other cultures. And I believe they do, mostly they do, most kids, from my experience. I, well, I, yes, go, so much. I'll share a, a small, uh, you know, small step that I, I often take in my family, right? I cook, I enjoy cooking. And uh, I often, you know, create recipes of my own. And I have blended oregano with uh, hing. Hing is an Indian um, spice, you call it spice or something that adds flavor to your food. I have a salmon ball recipe that combines oregano with hing and it just comes out amazing that combined flavor people tell me oh what is this and I have to explain it's an Italian spice with an Indian thing. So all I'm trying to say is that this is a, an, a multiculturalism happening within my house, uh, you know something that I'm bringing together, my children are seeing it and uh, I, I would like to be less and less of known as an Indian American but an American. Uh, to me, and being an American is a reflection of, you know, sharing all those common things, common values that we bring from across the world and, and, and still, you know, distinguish ourselves. And I think that's the beauty of America. And uh, we will be better off as a country solving problems of this country if we come together with that kind of mindset. Mm. Yes. Very well said. I will add to everything that Ilana said, respect. I think that that is the um, the main ingredient, talking about food, you know, <laughs> the main uh, ingredient, because without it, we couldn't uh, embrace, we couldn't appreciate other, other beliefs. And so that's my perspective, adding respect to, to whatever, you know, was said before. That, yes, that's, what I believe, that's what I believe in too, is respect. 
and we can learn each other's cultures and foods. So I think that that's I agree with you 100%. Respect is the key word for all, you know, everyone here. So no, absolutely. You know. And I think so I remember when I was in college, there was all these different ethnic based clubs or groups because so you had a Korean American group, Brazilian American group, Chinese American group. And if you had so many different groups, that means that your campus is diverse. That implies diversity. But to me, if they remain in their own pockets, you're diverse, but you're not multicultural. Multicultural would be that you have Koreans that attended the Southeast Asian community conference, or you had Chinese people enter into the African-American community and their celebration. And we said, I think we saw a lot of that in Livingston too. I mean, I remember I didn't necessarily, I didn't take Chinese, but there were so many different types of people wanting to take Chinese class and understanding that culture. And that to me is multiculturalism, the engagement. Yes. It's just talking of respect, right? I mean, as I think, I, I don't remember, I think Adriana mentioned in the context yes. of body language, every culture has its own nuance of expressing respect. The body languages are very different. How a Japanese shows respect to how an Indian does to how a Chinese or how a Italian does, it differs. I think if, especially our children, if they learn each other's cultures and they know that certain body languages mean something and they become aware. And I think uh, there's less of conflict in terms of, oh, being disrespected, right? Oftentimes I think older generations who come here, right? They feel respect is quote unquote, sometimes you know not there simply because of how they perceive it. So I think it's important that uh, knowledge and awareness will build, you know, is, is going to bridge that and reduce that kind of perception and we'll become more harmonious existing together. Yes. Yeah. But I also want to point out something else and I hope you guys, I don't know whether you will or won't agree with me. We are all here in the US and American culture is very, very different and very, very unique. And we all are in this country and we all are assimilating with this culture. For example, one of the yes. biggest examples for me, um, look at all of us, we always smile. You would never see it in the old Russian culture, people never smiled. They just didn't. The life was difficult. So people walk the street, when they were walking the streets, they were not smiling. But look, I don't think you would ever, I, most of the time, unless I'm really upset with something, I will smile. Even when I walk the street, I smile. When I go back to Russia, my friends who I grew up with, they said, why are you always smiling? What's wrong with you? <laughs> 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 so it's it's different but i learned it here because if you walk the streets in new york or anywhere in livingston people smile at you people say hello to you i walk in the neighborhood i don't know every neighbor in my neighborhood even though i know a lot of people as i'm a realtor in town but i don't know everybody people always say hi i walk the dog and people say hi you will i i think this is part of our culture and we learn from each other. Absolutely, learning yes. from each other. A lot of learning happening tonight and thank you all so much. Here's some comments in the live stream for everyone. Thank you again. If you have any questions for our panelists, people are saying, nice to meet you all. Hi everyone. Connecting the community is a beautiful thing. So what you all are creating, great to meet you all. Thank you everyone. This is a great forum to learn about different cultures, to be truly multicultural society. So really well done, everyone. Uh, and a lot more, uh, it's great to hear from everyone's views on multiculturalism, great to learn many common things in different ways. So thank you all for those that are watching online and thank you all for, uh, to our panelists here. We're up to about an hour. Uh, gosh, we could go on for another hour or so. It's such a big topic. And I look forward to hopefully we'll have other programs, whether they be online or in person. And as many of you said, sharing and infusing these ideas with our kids and a common, there's so many common themes here, but respect is such a big one, right? Respect. So uh, as we, let's go around. Uh, any last words of wisdom that you want to share with the community on this topic? Anything come to mind? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what um, Ilona said, um, embrace, right? So definitely it's an important point, but uh, in order to embrace something, you need to accept it, you need to respect it. So unless you accept and respect it, you cannot easily go and embrace it. So that's something everybody has to instill that in the future generations. That's very, very important because the world is getting smaller and smaller day by day. And uh, and it, that's that that's the future we're going to live in. So and our kids are going to live in. So that's very very important to teach this every day and day out for to our kids. I mean that we can only teach to kids if we accept it, respect it, and embrace our uh, uh, neighbor with the different cultures. I think that that's very important uh, point. I just want to make. It. I couldn't more agree with uh, Sereni about the approach uh, to this mod uh, mod culture is. Um, respect, accept, and embrace. Without any of the step, then you cannot achieve the ultimate goal. And uh, I like the, uh, the the fact that one plus one uh, is greater than two. So that is the essence of the uh, multiculturalism to me. So everyone, we come together, we, so we got uh, the best, out of each culture and make the American culture the greatest of all. Very nice, beautiful, Jenny. And I would just say, I, I've recently experienced the high school, well, I was last there in 2016, um, and I kind of went through the system. And I would say, you know, a lot of my cultural understanding and my kind of coming of age and learning how to reckon with my own culture, other people's cultures, um, whether that's just American or, you know, a lot of my friends were also Russian or, you know, um, we live in a diverse community and that understanding for me at least happens at the middle school age or the high school age. And so um, I know this is a Lovingston education page. And so just really shouting out that kids are really the next generation and that understanding comes to happen in middle school and high school, whether it be through the classes they take, the friends, the interactions they have, good and bad. And so um, I just want to kind of plant that seed again, that cultural understanding happens when you're really young as well. And so um, just want to shout out all the under 18 people who can be a part of this. But um, yeah, I just I just want to bring that up. That's where my understanding happened. That's where a lot of people's understanding is happening right now. So. Yes, we mm-hmm. need we need to to teach our kids um, that diversity is what unite us. Because if we were all the same, um, there will be nothing to learn from each other, nothing to uh, to have in common, to, to 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 bring the best out of each other. So diversity is what is the glue. And I think it's very important that, you know, we have to talk to our kids um, about diversity. That is, is, is really important. And I think- It's uh, the salt and pepper of life. I think being a, being a role model, right? And being a role model in the context of the time and the place, right? So we are immigrants who have come to America and we are parenting. This is a, I'm a first generation parent, very challenging. I grew up in a certain way. I have to adapt to a certain way of looking at how children grow up here and me changing myself, the parenting style of what I've seen myself as a child, right? There's a lot of transition that especially the first generation goes through. So it becomes equally important and more important, I think, as a parent to be very conscious of what you are saying, what you are setting an example of in your living room every day, because if you build that openness, openness of not saying all the time, hey, you know, me saying, hey, Indian culture is the best. No, every culture has something to offer. And that's why they are who they are. And it's very important to, to, to have that intellectual capability to learn and, and embrace and take it to make it, make it yours. You're lucky to be exposed to so many different things that you can pick and choose what's good for you and you define yourself who you want to become after that, right? So I think, again, uh, to be very brief, uh, parenting is very critical. Children are like sponges. We all know that. Uh, We can really make this a beautiful multicultural environment in this town if all of us are just conscious about the fact that 
you know, they, they will learn what you do in your home and they will take it forward and build a legacy of living in a beautiful harmony in this, uh, you know, diverse environment. So well stated, Soma. Beautiful, beautiful. Others, Mr. Hines, what's your, what are your thoughts on, you mentioned, of I, course, respect, but other. My thoughts is respect and we can, like you said, embrace each other and each other can learn each other's cultures. And I think that's important, you know, the food, learn how to do their food. People come to me, I teach them how to do their food. So if everybody intertwined with each other, that's a learning. And I think it's very important that we do that. And I think we, on the panel here, we're doing pretty good. And we, and what we do, what Mr. Raymond tonight doing is like a spark. We're a spark for the community. So once the community sees this, they go back, mm, yeah, we're gonna try this and try this. Because you remember one thing, we're all humans. We may have different things and stuff like that, but we all can learn from each other and give each other respect. That's important. Yes. The big word here is respect. So there you go. Well stated, Mr. Hines. I Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Those words of wisdom. Others, uh, your, your uh, words of wisdom, final thoughts. Uh, it's a big topic, but uh, here, I think most people have stated, right? Doug, you have any last minute thoughts? You, you're a man of the world, lived many different cultures, you're living it. Any? Well, one of the things I've tried to do with my children um, when they are looking at maybe some food that they're not familiar with because it's from another country um, and they say they don't like it and it doesn't taste good, I say to them, well, you know what? Um, Probably if you were born in that country and have grown up eating that food, um, you'd probably like it. So it's not that the food isn't good. It's just that you're not accustomed to it and you, um, or you're not familiar with it or accustomed to it, having acquired a taste for it. And I can, you can expand on that to other aspects of how people are different. Um, it's not, it's more about, it's not judging it, just not it's being it's different you may not be familiar with it but for instance in the indian and the chinese cultures food didn't just arrive on the scene yesterday it's been developing over thousands and thousands of years and if it weren't good it wouldn't be around it would have disappeared long ago so if people are eating it it's because it's good you may not be familiar with it but i can assure you it's delicious well said, what a great analogy. Uh, there's yeah. so many similarities that we have. And you know, the difference is, I look at it as it's the spice of life, right? Who mentioned, maybe it was Adriana, what yeah. a bland world it would be if we were all the same, right? So all our different yes. cultures are have unique qualities, but we have so many things in common. And uh, I'm super proud to live in this town. Uh, the demographics are, wonderful to see it becoming more of a global and a reflection of the world, as I mentioned. So I want to thank everyone. This is a beautiful tapestry mosaic on screen. And I look forward to uh, meeting you all. Let's, uh, let's maybe we'll have an in-person multicultural event. That would be something interesting and nice. If you're that all would be very involved. nice. I want to thank everyone for their time, their knowledge, uh, sharing your experience. It's a wonderful evening here. So uh, I'm going to- Thanks to you to, you know, thanks. to organize this. I think it's a wonderful yeah, thank first you, step and we should, we should do it more often. Mike, and if you, we forgot about a very important thing. All our elementary schools always had multicultural nights every year. Yes, yes. Where all the countries, different foods, activities, history, everything, costumes or clothing were represented. I think maybe it stopped during COVID, but I believe they even had it this year. They, they will have this year, I think. I'm so glad you brought that up, Alona, because I, I was thinking about that. Yeah, multicultural nights have been going on in the schools for many, many years. And it would be interesting. Maybe we should have an adult multicultural night in the community center, bring different foods and yeah, uh, like mini panels, some food for thought, right? So thank yes. you all. Yeah, yeah. Thank yes. you all.
I go, thank you all so much. This is uh, enlightening and wonderful for the community. So we're, we're gonna uh, sign off for now. I uh, wanna say thank you again, everyone. Uh, we'll see you around town. Uh, one thing I, I want to say is the Chinese, Livingston Chinese Mount, uh, Culture Day for this year is uh, May 7th at high school. So everyone welcome to high school. Uh, to see what Chinese New Year, uh, Chinese Day is. All right. A lot of fun there. Good night, everyone. Have good a night. Good Bye, evening. everybody. Have night. a good evening. Night. Thank you. Night. Thank you.